check this out. We have a whole nother type of pitcher plant. This is called the aptly named yellow pitcher plant. They get up to three feet high. And as you can see, it looks totally different than the parrot pitcher plant, but it still has a mouth and it still captures insects. The way this plant functions is around this lip, there's really, really thick nectar secretions. And this is a plant that specializes in wasps, hornets, bees, and flies. I can actually feel the nectar on this lip. And eventually the nectar makes it kind of loopy. It doesn't pay attention and it tumbles down this hole. Now, just like with the parrot pitcher plant, there's downward pointing hairs that create an obstacle for the insect. It goes down, down, down until it reaches the bottom and there it gets digested. The coolest thing about this plant is what is inside right now. Just inside the lip, if you look down, is a spider. Now, why would that spider be there? Isn't it gonna get caught? The answer is no. They use their silk to kind of adhere to the side of the pitcher plant so they don't fall down the pit. And what they're doing is they're relying on the plant to capture their prey. So the bugs are flying in, attracted to the nectar. The spider just waits there, lurking. And once that fly or bee lands there, the spider pounces up, grabs it, starts consuming it, waits for the next one. This is a great example of a plant and an animal working together. To think that a plant, you know, a plant just like these grasses evolved to capture insects, digest them, and grow in an area with so low nutrients that most other plants can't grow, that is crazy. Yellow pitcher plant, one of the coolest plants in the world right here in the Apalachicola drainage. Let's